Hello everyone and welcome to another Pat Problems video. My name is Helena, I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be finishing off question number 19 from the 2014 Pat paper. So in the previous video I took you through parts A and B of our mechanics question which was two blocks attached by an inextensible string hanging over a pulley um, down into a hole in a table and we were being asked to find the tension in the string and the acceleration of the blocks first considering no friction on the table and then considering friction so in part c the final part of this question we're now being asked to add something else to this equation so we're still considering friction we're now considering a rotating table okay so now the table on which mass m1 is resting is now rotating about the vertical axis going through the middle of the table, so around the center of that hole, with an angular speed omega. Okay, so before we get any further in the question, let's visualize what's going on. So if we picture a circular table for ease, bird's eye view, so we're looking down on top of the table now, we have that hole in the middle, we have our block M1 connected to block M2, which is hanging down in the center of the hole, and we're now rotating this table, so we're spinning it around with an angular speed, omega. OK, so what are we being asked to calculate now? So we're being asked uh, to calculate expressions for the minimal and maximal distance between M1 and the axis of rotation, so the centre of that hole, such that for between these distances, M1 is not moving radially. OK, so first things first, let's redraw the diagram that we've been using. So quickly sketch that out. So we have our table, which we're now considering friction. So I'm just going to add some dashes to remind myself. We have our block M1 on the table, which is connected over a pulley to our block M2, which is hanging down that hole in the middle. We've still got our weights acting vertically downwards. On both of the blocks we still have our string tension however now because we've got a rotating table so remember the direction that it's rotating in so we're kind of pushing this into the plane of the paper in its rotation we now have a resultant force because of that circular motion acting to the center of that rotation so this central point here okay and we've got a distance r. Imagine this is a point, point-like object. Obviously, it's not in my drawing, but imagine it is for that distance. And we have this distance r here between the block m1 and the central axis of rotation. Now, remember, we are considering friction. So at these two points here, so we're being asked to find the values for R at which M1 is not going to move radially, so it's not going to move any closer to the hole or any further away from the hole. OK, so at those two boundary points, we can consider how friction will act. OK, so we've got two different scenarios. The frictional force could either be acting in this direction, so away from the hole. That's if the block is moving towards the hole, the friction is acting the other way. However, if the block is wanting to move away from the hole, we would have the frictional force acting in the same direction as the tension. So those are the two scenarios that we've got to consider here. OK. And also we need to consider the acceleration. So we don't want our block moving radially. That means we've got no acceleration in this case. So we have that A is equal to zero, no net acceleration. That also means that our frictional force, so we're using the same format of frictional force as before, is going to be using our static coefficient because we've not got any motion in that radial direction. So it's mu s m1 g. OK. We can also look at the forces on our block two. And again, with no acceleration, these forces will be balanced. So we have that t is equal to m2 g. Now, the other force that we're going to have to think about is this net force due to the circular motion, which hopefully you remember is of the form 
mv squared over r, or if we're thinking about angular speeds rather than linear speeds, that can be written as m r omega squared. This is acting on block one, so we've got our m1 here, and then we're going to be wanting to find these two different extreme values for r. So let's redraw the forces on block one in those two different scenarios. So we're either going to have our block m1 with our tension here, our net force due to the circular motion here. We're either going to have it wanting to move away from the hole, which means that our friction is acting in this way, or we have our block m1 with our tension and our net force here, wanting to move towards the hole, which means that our frictional force is going to be acting in this direction. So let's set up our two equations. So we have our net force Fc is equal to T plus Fr, FFR, frictional force in this case. And in this case, we have that it is T minus our frictional force. So we've got sort of like a plus minus situation going on here. Let's substitute in our values. So we have our equation for our uh, circular motion force here. So we have M one R omega squared. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap while we decide which one's the maximum, which one's the minimum, and then I'll write it in, which is equal to our tension, which is M two G plus our frictional force, which is the mu S M one G. And over here we have M one R omega squared is equal to M two G minus mu S M one G. Okay, so now you can see why we've got a maximum radius and a minimum radius. So here where we've got the minus sign, we're going to have our minimum. And here we're going to have our R max here where we're summing the two terms. So let's divide through by our M one omega squared in both of our equations to find our values for R. So our R max is going to give us m2g plus mu s m1g divided by m1 omega squared. And our r min is going to be m2g minus mu s m1g divided by m1 omega squared. So those are our extremes for our radius, for that distance between the block and the central axis of rotation. And in between those two values, we're not going to get any acceleration. We're not going to get any motion. So depending on where we place our block, R1 is going to determine where, whether we get motion or not in that radial direction. If we place our block further out, um, further away from the hole, greater than R max, we're going to get some acceleration. And if we place it further in than R min, we're also going to get some acceleration. It just depends on which direction our frictional force is going to be acting in those two scenarios, which determines which direction that acceleration is going to be. So now we're adding the rotating table. We've got an extra layer to think about in this question. So I hope that has helped explain this question. This is one particular way of solving this question, one particular train of thought uh, to go about answering this. Um, and I hope that was useful and please join us again next time for another Pat Problems video.